Hello and welcome to How I Built This Resilience Edition from NPR. I'm Guy Raz. Uh, this is where we are hearing some of the creative ways that businesses are building resilience during this very challenging time. Um, in the windows uh, next to me are Lauren Neustadter and Sarah Harden. They run the production studio Hello Sunshine. Um, it was founded by Reese Witherspoon and it's devoted to telling female driven stories across all media platforms and just today. Ripped from the headlines, breaking news. Uh, its show's got 18 Emmy nominations this morning. Um, the shows include Little Fires Everywhere, The Morning Show, Big Little Live. Lauren, Sarah, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having us. Um, congratulations, 18 Emmy nominations. Thank you, we're so excited. <laughs> it's, it's it was a great day. In, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good, good morning. Um, by the way, if you are watching this um, via Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, we are taking your questions. You know how much we love them because I don't get to ask those questions when I'm in the studio doing a podcast interview normally. Um, any questions you have about the entertainment industry, about TV, about Reese Witherspoon, about Lauren and Sarah, please um, keep them coming. So first of all, um, for people who don't know about the production company, <laughs> about Hello Sunshine. Just t t tell us a little bit about it, Lauren. Well, I will let Sarah talk about the media company and I can talk about the film and television side, which I was really privileged to have, have been invited to join Reese and Sarah in forming just over three years ago. Um, you know, we really, exactly as you said, Guy, we pride ourselves on putting women at the center of all of the stories that we tell. And so we want to see them in unconventional ways as heroes of their own stories. And we feel so proud and so excited to have been able to work on Big Little Lies, on The Morning Show, on Little Fires Everywhere, on Truth Be Told. And we're so excited about this next batch of shows, which I know we'll be talking about with you because, you know, we were meant to have been in production on three shows uh, now, but we have sort of pressed pause because of COVID. Yeah, Sarah. So, Sarah, tell us about about Hello Sunshine. A little bit more about it. Well, look, I think you know the company was founded with a driving mission and really a gap in the marketplace that we saw, which was um, to put women at the center of these stories. And I think when we started the company, we sort of embrace the complexity of wanting to do that um, in storytelling formats where women are spending really led, um, was the first executive hire at the company and has built an incredible position with Greece in a scripted business. And we've since launched an unscripted division and um, kids in animation. And then we support that with, you know, sort of the daily conversation around our shows on our social and editorial handles. Um, and, you know, with Reese's book club, particularly, you know, books release a lot of what we do and um, they're, Part of Reese, you know, Reese um, is a huge reader. She reads all the book picks, and um, and we love elevating um, uh, female narratives um, from books and in other ways as well. As, as both of you know, this is a business show. We talk about you know the business of every industry, including the entertainment industry, which has been, and we'll get into this, which has really been hit hard. Um, so first of all, just from a business perspective, how has the pandemic and, and the, you know, the, the health crisis and the economic crisis affected Hello Sunshine? Sarah, do you want to talk about it? Well, I think, you know, I think the most immediate. Yeah, we wanted to talk about just our, you know, where we are in our production pauses, and then I can speak to the rest of the company. Well, let, let me ask you specifically, I mean, have you, for example, just had to like cut any, any staff, for example? We haven't, we have we've actually, you know, we've had the experience of, of onboarding, uh, I think, uh, nine or ten new employees, which is a new thing for us. I mean, I, there's people I speak to every day that I've not met in person. Um, and, you know, I think transitioning the way we manage um, both as a company and then each of our leaders um, uh, likes people. Um, but you now we've continued to grow. I think we've got parts of our 
business that are paused mostly in production, but other parts um, even on that side of the business. And Lauren can certainly speak to, we've steamed ahead with development and um, across the whole Yeah, company. Lauren, I mean, so let's talk about, about production. Um, we had Jeremy Zimmer on here a couple of days ago, um, the head of United Talent Agency. And basically he, he said, everything's on pause in, in Hollywood right now. Films, TV just are not happening. It's not safe. Um, is that the presumably that's the case with your productions, right? You're not you're not filming anything right now. That's correct. We we have pressed pause. We were we had just started shooting our second season of the morning show, and we were meant to have a, a show start production for Amazon, a show called Daisy Jones and the Six was going to start in April, and then we had another show for Netflix called From Scratch that would have been starting this month, and we have paused everything and we are deep in figuring out how and when we can come back for each of those shows. But I will say, you know, we've used the time in inspiring and extraordinary ways. I think, you know, we, we were dealt a very specific hand. Unfortunately, you can't congregate with large groups of people on a set, on a soundstage anymore. So what we really did was we took the opportunity to connect with our team internally and also with the people that we create with. And we've really, I think, planted some wonderful seeds of development that will hopefully grow in the years to come. Um, and in truth, if we had been in production on the three shows and the movie that we thought we were going to be in production on, we might not have had time to, to build out the development slate in quite the way that we have. So I think that there has been a silver lining, but I will say we are all more than eager to get back into production when yeah. we are spending our figuring out how to do it safely. Well, let me, let me ask you specifically about the morning show. I mean, that, that, um, that was, there was season one, which was great. It was terrific. I loved it. I watched all of it and I'm not, as anyone knows me, I just, I don't watch a lot of TV cause I don't have a lot of time, but I binged that show on planes. It was so good. Um, Thank you. how are you going to finish it before? I mean, how are you going to finish season two? Cause I'm assuming it's not all filmed, right? It is not all filmed. We are figuring it out right now. We are talking to epidemiologists, to health and safety experts. We've got a COVID coordinator. We have a world-class team that is working with us to figure out every day, what do we do? We've had our epidemiologist came and, and you know, looked at our sound stages and at the, you know, the ventilation and figuring out, you know, obviously there have been all of these white papers that have come out that talk about what is required in terms of health and safety. And thankfully, each of the studios that are producing these shows also are doing their own sort of COVID Bible, as it were, talking about all the precautions that they're going to be taking. And look, people are taking this incredibly seriously. Health and safety is the most important thing. And in a very inspiring way, I think companies are working together to share you know, information and ways that they can innovate together um, to get productions back on their feet quickly. And look, I mean, there are shows that are going to be going back uh, in August from what I hear. So I think we're well on our way. I mean, is uh, there a word? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I, By the way, there's a bit of a delay if you're watching on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube. So sorry about that. We were, we're working on it, but um, but it's but for the audio quality is going to be great when this is on the podcast. So don't worry about it. Um, is there a world, Lauren, where there's like like how how the NBA is doing a bubble, right? Everyone's in Orlando playing basketball and staying in that bubble. Is there a world where like Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon and and Steve Carell and all these actors are in a bubble for like six weeks to finish filming? Well, our shoot is more like six months for a season, so it's a longer it's a longer stretch, and I think. Though we aren't right now talking about going into a bubble, quote unquote, I do think what we're talking about is how to be as safe as possible. And obviously, you know, when you go into these into these production papers, we're creating zones so that only the very most essential people would actually be on set, uh, so that we will be reducing risk and everyone will be, you know, honoring everything around social distancing and people making sure that they are appropriately covered and that, you know, that everyone is taking all precautions. I think there are yeah. lots of conversations being had, but, but not ones, to answer your question, not ones about a bubble in the way that the NBA is, though I think that people are talking about that when they think about shooting out of state. Yeah. I mean, it, 
Jeremy um, talked about the possibility that in like four to six months, we're going to start to see a shortage of new TV. What do you think about that? I mean, is that a possibility? I definitely think that's a possibility. Wow. I, mean, I think it just depends on how much people have in their coffers and how where they are in post and what they're planning in terms. Of, I'm sure that people are being very deliberate about the release schedules. Yes, I mean, obviously, it's been it's been quite a long time since we've been able to be on a set, and so you know, if, if they don't have it on film, it's very hard to cut it and uh, and present it to an audience. How many? I mean, I, I think you had like six. Yeah, and I think. Oh yeah, please, Sarah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think what's also interesting is you look at you know, um, I think when we talk about our big, crude, complex scripted shoots and then you look at you know you look at the unscripted business where certain formats are able to shoot with with a much lower foot i think the question already seeing some of it right like um as some of those bigger shoots get delayed or they have big set pieces or big crowd scenes um how you are both innovating on the formats of those scripted shows but then also as you look at what does it um open up in terms of opportunities for um, unscripted programming and other types of formats that just have a lower and safer shooting footprint as well. What What do you think, this is for both of you, I mean, what do you think happens to, I mean, as you kind of begin to develop a Bible, a safety Bible, so to speak, and protocols, um, which will have mixed results, right? I mean, there there are going to be productions that, that will be able to film safely, and then there are going to be situations where somebody tests positive and the whole thing gets shut down, as, we, as we're seeing with baseball right now. Um, I mean, is there a is there any way, given that you I mean you, you're not just a production company, you're a business, how do you plan for the possibility that that this could continue well into next year and it will significantly slow down or prevent new productions from being filmed? How, how do you I mean, are you planning for that possibility now? You know, I'd say as a company, like we're fortunate, for example, the kids in animation business. So, you know, I think there's parts of our business that can move forward um, in sequence. I mean, the most important thing is humans <laughs> in this time right. and the safety of um, our employees, of crews, and that just trumps everything. And so, you know, I think that there is certainly um, a desire to put people back to work and you know the economic fabric Los Angeles hinge on on that but I think um, not at the expense of the safety of everyone involved and so I think we're we're fortunate as a company where we have um, you know we've built a company with different um, streams and we're in a position that um, even with significantly further production delays you know we're still going to be okay um, but I think like everyone, we're doing this to manage and, um, and balance um, really, really tough questions yeah. um, and doing it really openly, transparently with our team as humanly as we can as leaders and um, in our company and being good partners to um, all of the people involved in each of the things that we do because we don't do any yeah. of that alone. Lauren, I know, I mean, you've been in the film industry your entire career. You were at Miramax and Fox and just just like on a just like from your perspective as a as an industry person, you know, this must be so weird. You, I mean, it's like it's like time is frozen in Hollywood right now in, in a sense, right? It is definitely weird. <laughs> I will be honest. It does feel like things are a bit frozen, but I actually think, in a way, things are also thawing. I think this is an opportunity to slow down and to connect in ways that maybe we weren't slowing down and making time to connect before. I think that is the case internally at Hello Sunshine, but I also think in a very remarkable way, it is the case externally. I find that, you know, where typically we roll phone calls and we go from call to call to call to meeting to meeting to meeting, we are now connecting with each other. I'm hearing about people's kids 
We're talking about yeah. what are you doing about school? How people ask, how are you? And they really listen. We're really interested to know. And I, I think that we're doing something tremendous in our industry where we're building a foundation where when we do come back, we will be stronger and better because of it. And as Sarah said, I do think that the fact that the health and safety is the most important, I think everyone agrees. I think everyone is sharing resources and information. And I think we're all looking out for each other in an extraordinary way. And I think that that was something we, we were all moving so quickly before. Um, you know, I, I think that the, I think slowing down a little bit isn't necessarily the worst thing. Um, I mean, it's also this, this strange time in that people are consuming so much more content, right? People are at home there. I mean, Netflix and Spotify are off the charts. People are watching content um, on all these different platforms, Hulu and Apple. Um, so, so does that change in any way how you have started to think about what what your projects might look like in six months or a year's time from now or two or five years from now? I mean, are these kind of changing consumption habits already starting to change the way you're thinking about how how you guys pick which projects to do? Well, we really pick projects that we love. You know, I, I, I'll just... Go ahead, Sarah. Lauren, keep going. <laughs> I, I know we were going to, we were mind melded, Lauren and I. So I think the one thing I would say is, you know, we're in the futile business. And I think um, we had a deep respect. And certainly in when we started Hello Sunshine, a really deep respect for audiences. And there's never been more demands on their time. And in a world where we are staying at home, um, there's still incredible demands on people's time. What people are juggling right now is unreal. And um, and so I think that guides us, like, and so it means that being incredibly intentional in every story we pick and choose, really trying to surround the full resources of our teams to make, um, make everything we do, do our best to do that because it's so hard. Um, and um, and that's what drives us. And so I, I wouldn't say, I don't think we sort of, we've never tried to look at where's the market going and what's in right. favor, what's find an amazing story, tell, um, a voice we want to elevate. And, you know, and I think Laura really drives that with Reese on the scripted side and equally we've got incredible executives across the company that are doing that for each of their parts of the company. And, and that's our North Star. I know that um, the mission of your company is to elevate um, and to tell stories of women. Um, I mean, what, 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 what is it what sort of, from your perspective, Lauren, what is the state of state of things now for, you know, stories, stories about women, um, women driven narratives, um, women writing screenplays, directing, um, how would you assess where Hollywood is right now with respect to that? I have to tell you, I think it's a great time to be a woman in Hollywood. I think truly, you know, there are so many people that are doing incredible things, but I, I certainly put Reese at the top of that list. I think she has really devoted herself to putting women at the center of stories and advocating for women and cheering women on as they are doing the same and talking to them as they're creating production companies. I mean, we're constantly talking about, you know, this person is creating a production company. Who would be a great person for them to hire? This book isn't exactly right for us, but maybe it's exactly the thing that this person is looking for. I think, you know, it's a really wonderful time of collaboration among women in Hollywood. I have been so inspired by the transformation that I have seen in the time that we have been working at Hello Sunshine. I think it's tremendous. I think. I think that you know, telling stories about women has really come to the front of everyone's minds and obviously also representation and inclusion, which is a huge part of our mission at our company, I think has become something obviously that is at the forefront of every conversation in our industry right now as it should be. Um, so I think it's a real time of, of opportunity and it's, it's quite inspiring. How are you, um sort of, I mean, w with respect to your, some of your bigger shows, I mean, you've got, you work with Apple, obviously on the morning show, and I think Little Fires Everywhere is on Hulu, and you work with different partners and platforms. Um, can you kind of walk us through 
how like what what the strat what your strategy is for working you know with specific partners on specific projects and 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 other partners on other projects absolutely we are very lucky that we we're pretty much in business with everybody um which is wonderful but what we try to do as as sarah was saying we start with telling stories that move us telling stories that we feel passionate about and then what we do we're very lucky because we're not tied to one particular place. So what we're able to do is find a story that we love, find a story that we're passionate about telling, put a writer into the project that we know is exactly the right writer, find the actress that we think is perfect to star in that show. And then the Hollywood term is packaging, right? So we, we put the package together, we put the group of people together that we think is perfect for that project. And then we bring it out into the marketplace and when we bring it out into the marketplace, we have the opportunity to engage in conversations with each of the platforms, or if it's for theatrical, each of the studios, you know, or the, the premium cable outfits, HBO and Showtime. And we get to hear how they connect with the material. And we always choose the place that shares our passion, right? So when they love it, like we love it, we know it's the right fit. And I think we've been very lucky um, with so many of our shows to really find perfect partners. Um, and we've we've had great success working with all of the different platforms. It's really been it's been great. Sarah, did you wanna did you wanna chime in? I know there's a delay, so I'm gonna wait. No. I think she just <laughs> she said it. I think she said it all. And um I do think it's that it's the thoughtfulness that we try and and um combinations of things that we put together in a way that's distinctive and so shows not only um you know part of what we say as a company it's not just our responsibility which we take very seriously create great storytelling but also to be great partners as um as our platforms launch those stories and i think having the social reach that we do i mean we work very hard to just be um great marketing partners as well. Um, and, you know, when we have a book like Little Fires Everywhere, you know, we pick that for book club in September of 17 on its published date. And so if you've been following our social handles, our our followers have had a two and a half year relationship um, with Little Fires and they fell in love with that book when they read it and they heard when we announced it, Carrie and Reese were starring and, and so, um, it's a long journey for them. And um, and it's one of the things as a company that, that, that we look to do a few things well, and then we pour our whole company's heart and soul and capabilities and into um, into really helping launch that. Into um, the world. I've got a question from Dante Richardson, um, watching by Facebook. He's a 23 year old aspiring producer. He wants to start a production company in the near future. Um, so he, he's asking for your advice. What is the best advice you have for him if he wants to get started um, in in this business? Um, where, what, what does he do first? Well, I think if he wants to be a producer, the best and fastest way to get going is to find a piece of material that he really loves. For us, I mean, Little Fires, as Sarah was saying, is an amazing example of we read a book that hadn't yet published and we loved it. And we saw it as something that we wanted to celebrate through our book club, but also we saw it as a limited series. We knew what the show was. So I think that my advice for him is try to find a book that you love, try to find an article that you think would make a great movie or make a great television series, and then challenge yourself to take it and put all of the pieces of the puzzle together, find a writer that you love, come up with a take, you know, and then approach other producers that might be able to mentor you and guide you. We often partner with producers who have incredible taste in IP, but might want to partner with us because we're gonna help them to flesh it out and bring it to life um, in the way that, that they really hope. So I think there are always opportunities, but it starts with great material. Um. Before we go, for both of you, when you when you sort of you talked a little bit about how this is a you know it's been a time a, a pause and a time to kind of slow down and not jump from call to call to call to call and and you know this constant just just mm -hmm. racing forward. What do you want to take from this this time um, that you want to apply to 
what you do as a business as, and as a company forever and ever afterwards. I guess I'll, you know, I think it's been a time of like deep humanity, like deeply human leadership, deeply, I mean, it's uh, humanity and humility as well. I mean, managing three kids, a school, working full time, trying to do my best as a, a leader. And, um, and, you know, it's, that's what entertainment and media is about, like human stories. And I just am constantly reminded of that. And um, uh, I'm like proud about how our whole team has really done their best through some very trying circumstances for many of our employees as well. And um, I don't, I don't want to ever lose that humanity um, as we sort of hopefully move into a period that's, that's less traumatic and taxing on all of us. Right. I couldn't say it better than Sarah said it. I, I agree with everything that she said. And I agree, you know, I, I think that the humanity is everything. I also think we've had an opportunity to get curious in ways that have yielded great results for us. And I think slowing down and really listening and taking time to think about questions that will help us do better, um, I think is so important. And I think we've had the luxury of being able to do that in this time when things have moved a little bit slower. And I think it will be very important as things ramp up again to make sure that we're deliberate about giving ourselves the time and space to ask the questions and to really listen so that we can continue to evolve and continue to do better. Um, Sarah, how old are your kids, by the way? Uh, 16, 14, and 10. Okay, so you got to guess. Have, and, and Lauren? Yeah, so the, the hours of Netflix a day is about in proportion of, of that. <laughs> I have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a nine-year-old and an eleven-year-old. I know it's it's crazy. Harder with teenagers in some ways because they don't they want to see their friends. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all hard. Yeah, I mean it is. Um, but I do think that 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 what you said earlier, Lauren, this idea that you know you're getting to know other people's kids. I mean, it does build empathy, right? I mean, we're all on these Zoom calls, and we're all kind of seeing what you know what 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 the reality of just kind of getting through the day is for for our colleagues and i think that's important i think that actually has um created really important connections in in a way that um, would not have happened if we if we weren't all thrown into this i will tell you i was on a zoom with the head of a streaming platform and her eight-year-old daughter came in to ask a question in the middle of the zoom and i felt so happy and so relieved because I think we're all going through very similar things where we're trying to do these jobs that we love, but we're also trying to stay connected to our children in a moment when we know that they're incredibly vulnerable. Um, it's actually something that, that Sarah and I talk with Reese about a lot because she has three kids too. And so, you know, we, we spend a lot of time talking to one another's children. Yeah. And it's actually, it's actually quite nice. Yeah. Um, Lauren, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for having us, Guy. We so appreciate it. I've always, I've been such a big fan for so many years. Um, and so it's like a personal kind of little thrill to be doing this thank with you. you so I know, we were very excited to be, to be having this conversation with you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick announcements before everybody hops off. On Friday, we are back here with uh, Alberto Perlman, the founder of Zumba Fitness, which you may not know is the world's largest fitness brand. Uh, has, it's in 186 countries. We did that story on how I built this several years ago. Um, Al Alberto and Beto, his partner, were on the show. Such a crazy story. Tony the Tiger. I, I, it was. It's like a. It's like a magical realist story. Anyway, um, Zumba this Friday. He's going to be talking about fitness in the time of pandemics. Um, so join us at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. 
We just dropped a brand new episode of How I Built This. It came out yesterday. It's um, the story of the laundress. Um, it makes non-toxic laundry products sold to Unilever for like a hundred million dollars. But getting there was a rocky road. Many years where it was seemed like the company was just going to collapse. Lindsay Boyd tells the story. Super cool. Check it out. I will be back here on Friday with um, Alberto Perlman. Um, thank you for joining us, and I will see you in a few days.